Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the next episode of Gramophone Live. This is one that I've been really excited about. In fact, probably the one I've been most excited about since I heard that we were going to do this because tonight I have the honor and privilege of being joined by one of my heroes in this industry, a gentleman who is incredibly brilliant, designed some of my most favorite products, and is about the nicest, most humble guy you can possibly expect to meet. And that is Vince from Totem Acoustic. Vince, thank you so much for being here, man. Well, thank you. And Luke. for driving all the way down from Canada. It was a pleasant drive. And Good. Uh, thank you, Luke, and thank you to the Gramophone, actually, for hosting this event. Oh, it is our pleasure, and we are all, just as much as me, thrilled to have you. Tremendous. For those of you who don't know, Gramophone has carried Totem Acoustic for almost as long as both companies has, have existed. I think, Vince, you're probably our oldest professional relationship, and over that time, I know you've become great friends of many of the people here, even on a more personal level, which is just fantastic. Because the great thing about audio, other than the fact that we can enjoy it all by ourselves, what's even better is when we all enjoy it together, don't you think? Uh, very true. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, over the years, uh, Gramophone has seen Totem grow from just a few models mm. to over 70 models. Everything from our architectural to our fabulous classic line, to the spectacular element line, and I think the very beautiful and very practical and modern kin line. Oh yeah. The kin powered line. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to start with uh, maybe a little bit of the kin intro. Uh, we will, though I do want to ask you a couple things well, first. I'm really just about you, because we're just as happy to have you here as we are I'm to have your incredible product. So Vince, before Totem, Tell me about a little bit about the Vents before Totem, and then what led you to create this company? I know a little bit of that story, mm -hmm. but let's share it with our friends here. Well, I must tell you that it was, uh, it was a, a love of listening to music. Mm. Of course, you know, I, I taught for many years, math, physics, whatever I could, and uh, there was always a, an underlying passion for music. And uh, as a young gentleman, a young man, I ob oftentimes dabbled it. And uh, when I got my first CS jobs, I decided to buy some very high-end equipment. And the high-end equipment, unfortunately, I found lacking, and mostly not so much the electronics and some of the other things that were associated with it, but more so the speakers that I came upon. I spent as much as a diesel Mercedes on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, I had a very young family, and I said, you know, selfishly, I said, I deserve this. I think I'm going to purchase these, and it'll be an end-all speaker for me. And unfortunately, that was not the case. Mm. So sometimes whatever you read, whatever is practical, uh, whatever is durable, whatever seems correct at the beginning does not end up to be so. Mm -hmm. And I had, a, I had a, a very, you know, great admiration for some small panel speakers from Quad, the original 57, just on axis, if you wouldn't move your, was fabulous in the mids. And uh, I said, well, I think the world needs something to exacerbate that imaging possibility that a speaker can give, but without the downfalls of having to listen in a very localized spot. That one chair, and that's it. That one it. chair. And don't forget that in the 80s, mid 80s, cars were 28 feet long, weighed four tons, and everything was extra large. Speakers were gigantic. And we came upon the notion of making a very small monitor, because I think we were the first with the Model 1, a very small monitor that would sort of blow people out of their seats, and totally mm -hmm. unexpected. And when we ever, whenever we showed that particular unit, the original Model 1, in the various shows in London, in Toronto, and the, the first shows in 88, 89, we always showed it behind us, a large speaker, or next to it, and people thought, of course, the large speaker is playing in the middle of the room with no bass support. And people were saying, oh my gosh, that imaging is quite fabulous. This was just the impetus to get it going. But we had done a few years of research into almost panel-type speakers initially, mm. and I was always trying to get products that were not obtrusive in the wall in the room, I should say. And large speakers in a room, well, you're always fighting with your spouse or your partner or someone, and where to put them, and it was always uh, that, that type of context. 
plus there was wasn't the speed factor the surprise factor the itching factor that we wanted mm. and our first pre totem let's say production was basically a non-wall speaker that was just three inches deep and six foot tall and a, f a foot and a half wide that could do 30 to 30. We proved that the concept can work, a very shallow speaker on wall that would give great off-axis reproduction because don't forget they are parallel to the walls. Mm. So we, I, learned how to do a little bit of this off-axis magic understanding that on-axis performance and off-axis performance is totally different and that things in order for them to coalesce in space have to have a great phase integration that means the ability for the drivers just to mesh into music and in has to do with space. making sure that like all the timing is lined up yes, right correct and that's a, a very difficult aspect because physics is physics and if you have micro pulsations coming from drivers and they're combating each other it becomes a little mushy and not clear and not spatially spectacular mm. and you don't get this distribution of of energy in space just like in real music so the objective was a tall one but we proved it with the model one initially and then we subsequently bought out, brought out some other monitors mm. and the gramophone was one of the first uh, United States representatives of ours in here. And I must say that that situation continued until this very day. And this very day, we're still a company that is honed towards this very accurate open sound, but very harmoniously melodic without being aggressive and most importantly, non-fatiguing. Romantic truth. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a lot of words for me, but I, I, I believe what, we, what we're saying. And of course, times change, but look how, how history changes also. After we made the monitors and a few towers, uh, Lucy, our VP, who's a woman, and she heads my company, said, hey, what were you thinking of? You had designed a non-wall speaker many years ago. Design one that is ultra compact, but that sounds like a gigantic speaker. Mm. That was a tall order. So in, we, we, ha we, over the years, have used some of the best subcontractors in the industry to make drivers for us. Uh, Dynario, Seas, uh, all the brands. We have 30 different suppliers that supplied us with raw products that we would engineer together and that we would assimilate into our speaker systems. And they were always different because our speaker systems were smaller in volume. They were small cabinets, huge sound, great dynamic potential. And Lucy wished me to put it in a very shallow speaker such as this, and that would give us huge bass on wall. That was a tall order. And since we could not get it from our subcontractors over the years, and this is, of course, 15, 17 years into Totem's history, we had to come out with a completely new technology for small driver designs. And that new technology initiated the torrent principle, which is a torrent technology. That means a superlative small driver with huge magnetic strength and that can extend both in bass and in high, higher frequencies, but with absolutely no crossover. And that became the element line, correct? Yes. That went from the tribe to the element line. But first the tribe, tor the torrent four inch tribe came out. And if people can see it, it's the first little unit here. This magnificent little unit weighs around six, seven pounds, has a huge neodymium structure. We start off with, I don't know, close to 12, 13 pounds of material and we machine it to this fine shape. And then we magnetize them individually. All this is handmade in Canada and distributed throughout the world. So this is something that is leading edge. Dynamic speaker design has not really moved forward. Until it, that. Until <laughs> we believe the torrent systems came out. I remember the first time um, that I got to meet you and I saw all the same stuff. You, you put one of those in my hand and I was almost dropped it because I couldn't believe how heavy it was yes. for such a small unit. And as my YouTube viewers know, well, it's not always true. It's often a rule of thumb that if it's heavy, it might be a better audio product. 
<laughs> yeah, our our drivers are heavy. Our cabinets are not that heavy. So that, that's one thing that, I've that's, noticed too. That's our principle. But over all that time of yes. developing those drivers and working on those new models and coming out with those units, we're now celebrating your thirty your thirty fifth anniversary, 35th, I believe. Yes. So after all this time, what today? Looking all the way back to the eighties, mm -hmm. but what today keeps you excited about doing this? I've always been motivated to bring the ultimate out of the speaker system. So if it's a, a $200, $300 in-ceiling speaker or our flagship Tribe Tower for a signature or Element Metal products, mm -hmm. I've always tried to extract the absolute maximum. That is a cradle that I've always tried to do. Hmm. And sometimes people have told me, well, you shot yourself in the foot. This is, sounds really too good for the price point but we don't believe in that we always try to extract the maximum from it so if you're if we're for using the best assembly techniques that we know how to be, how to utilize the best materials uh innovative in 1987 to 89 when we in initiated the borosilica dampening nobody knew what it was they didn't know that it was a perfect energy distribution system for the interior of a speaker and that's box. when you take the inside of a cabinet and rather than shoving it full of glorified cloth like polyfill yes. you coat it in this very space age, space age material correct. correct it was developed by nasa and it dissipates energy fantastically it space was, shuttle tiles i believe yes right? it was the powder that was used inside of these space shuttle tiles and that is an amazing distributor of oh, energy yeah. and we utilize it on the painting of most of our upper echelon cabinet work mm. But that is just a small part of what we did. And every product that we made, I can justifiably say, you even people who buy used products on here and there, they say, oh my gosh, this 25-year-old or 30-year-old totem sounds amazing. It is still amazing. Yeah, because we don't build obsolescence in our product. We like our product to last the 20, 30 years, if possible, of a, of, of a generation time for the model. And even as some things improve, like the introduction of Torrent, mm -hmm. even so, for the time that a product came out, it was a, it was the best that you could get, and it's still going to hold its own. Yeah, absolutely, and there's a, and there's always uh, principles that we adhere to. Our speakers don't beam. You know how people oftentimes, like this. yeah, exactly <laughs> like that. So they don't beam. Uh, oftentimes, if you go to a store or you visit a, 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 an audio show, you notice that people angle in their speakers. Well, those speakers are angled in because they beam in a particular pattern, and you have to be only in one position to get the maximum pleasure out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you have to sit like in a praying mantis mode right in the middle and hope that you can listen to most of it. And it's like good luck having your friends over to listen to an album or <laughs> let alone watch a movie or something like that, and everybody really have a good time. Yeah, very correct. And, you know, in, uh, when I was growing up and I was a young adult and an older adult later, I always liked having people enjoy the uh, experience that music brings forth oh yeah a and you can do it while you're cooking you can do it while you're talking and music from a totem speaker is not obtrusive even played at fairly loud levels you can still have a conversation because you have such little distortion that's just causing yep. no issues it's the phase that is correct between the drivers yep and the this the, the, the intermodulation distortion between those are kept to a minimal. I think you had told me before that really the ideal behind a totem speaker, to put it simply, is that it speaks to you as closely as possible to just a human voice would. Correct. That's how it spreads into the room. Yeah, very good. Yeah, well, that's a good analogy. You know, uh, if things beam at you, well, ours speak like a voice. So it sounds natural on all axes. So if you sit down or stand up in front of a totem speaker, well, it makes very little difference. On that note, that, that reminds me of something. Something I've always found to just be tragic when listening to music, or even movies for that mm -hmm. matter. Imagine uh, actors or vocalists yes. who have naturally wonderful voices, but if you play that back on a system that makes them sound shrill or screechy, that's just the worst. But when you play it, it back on something like a totem, which is already designed to speak to you much like the human voice, it just makes them sound so real, so rich. We believe that's the case, you know, and we, we articulate our pro products in that way. A totem is not just a North American company. We're one of the few North American makers that have good success externally.
Mm. People don't realize that, but we are exported in 45 different countries. And people appreciate a totem product for what it is. You're doing really well in Europe, I believe. Yes, we are. We, we sell, well, our, I think Lucy has all the figures, mm. but I think it's like a third in Europe, a third in the U.S., and a third in Canada, mm. which is a great distribution That's really for good. us. Yeah. And we like that type of distribution. We've never sought off a uh, very passing type of uh, markets that are just you know successful for a few years. We've never ch uh, went after that. We went after long-term relationships, such as the gramophone. That's why we're here for 30 years. And because a source such as yourself can correctly represent our product, mm -hmm. but can also explain it correctly. When you see a small box in a room, it looks like any other box in a, in a room. But when you hear it and a few things are pointed out, automatically the person doing the listening uh, notes it very well. And that is the case. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing I think with speakers is very, they are the almost inanimate objects that render music animate, meaning that they are the things moving the molecular <laughs> particles in a room. They are the ones that actually do the striking and the actual physical distribution of energy towards your body. And that is why we think a speaker is the most important thing in a, in a musical system. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, oh, it's 50-50. I believe there's more of a percentage on the speaker side. I agree, yeah, yeah. And, definitely. And the speaker also has the task of of not only representing the ideals of the artist that is playing, but also representing a pleasurable experience for the person listening to it. And people in general are intrigued not only by the listening of the music, but we want to be surprised. It's mm -hmm. in our character. We want to be surprised and shocked a bit. We want to hear things that come at you at intervals that we didn't think was possible. You want to be blown away. You want to be blown away. And these micro blowings away that you <laughs> that happen in a uh, in a stereo system or in a surround system with a totem product, I think are are constant and unique. Awesome. Well, you've got a couple different lines, and they all somewhat bleed over and intersect a little bit, yes. but there are some distinctions. Definitely. So I think the first one I wanted to talk to you about is your kin line, which you would call, in most cases, the introductory, but mm -hmm. that's introductory to really high quality. So we believe anyone so. hearing that, think no less of it, because some of the best stuff is in the kin line, and believe me, because we've heard it all over here. Now, the kin series, if I recall, I think you had told me that it is in part designed for somewhat younger audiences or those who are maybe new to exploring this thing called higher end or better audio. Mm -hmm. And you've got a lot of cool products in it. But one of the first that I think you started with, and I thought it was a great choice, by the way, because it made it so easy. You didn't need to buy any other components. Those can play bookshelves right there. Yes. Well, the can play bookshelf, I think, shocked a lot of people when they heard it. People, Me too. Yeah. And people are used to a fairly non-dynamic system when something's powered, and we examined the powered speakers that were out there, and we said, wow, they're a little bit underwhelming. And for those listening, when we say powered speaker, we mean a speaker that has its amps and electronics built in. You don't need anything else. So we have a master unit such as this that contains all the electronics. Yep. And in those electronics, you can control them to, you can connect them to your cable box. If you have a, even a CD player, you can do so through the RCA supplied. You can also connect them digitally to your computer and otherwise. But very importantly, it has an incredibly high quality D2A that operates in link with the Bluetooth system. And that D2A is, I think, extremely well chosen, whereby you can get a very nice sonic picture. So if you use Tidal, Spotify, or whatever your streaming services are on your phone, you can go directly to your, your uh, kin play and transfer beautiful music to your room. Now, is it the ultimate friend totem? No, but it still represents totem and most of its fantastic characteristics. Dynamic, it can actually go down close to 40 hertz, which means, what does that mean in layman terms? Great bass. Really good bass. <laughs> Without a subwoofer. Yeah. You know? And so the can play introduced totem at a, at a respectable price point to a whole large clientele. Why? Because we saw that 
college kids or younger adults has a, had a hesitance to invest into a sound system which they really didn't know much about. And what streaming do they need? What this do they need? Well, this is an all-in-one type of approach. You connect your, if you connect your TV to it, you can connect your streaming service to it or your uh, YouTube music on it, mm -hmm. and you can play it off. And it gives you a great restitution. When uh, a young man came up to me the first time we showed him, and he says, wow, these are spatially amazing. Yes. You know? and, and, that's, and that's the two true totem character. The spatial resurrection of sound. And if you notice, we can also put these straight ahead. So you don't have to angle them around the TV. Just put them straight ahead, enjoy the music, place them on a countertop, place them on a stand, do whatever you wish to them. And with the success of the KinPlay product, we subsequ subsequently brought out also the KinPlay Mini mm -hmm. for people who required uh, a less higher dynamic output, but just as fantastic, if not more, imaging with the KinPlay Mini. So on smaller tabletops like computers and things, these are more adaptable. Yeah. But although some people chose this one because they want more of the own. One of my favorite uses of that, because I got to test those out on my desktop at home, I still play games from time to time. Mm -hmm. Because of the incredible imaging qualities mm -hmm. of the all totem products, which is still present in that one, if you're playing games which have great spatial mixing, by yes. the way, because that's what it's all about, that'll change your life. Very true. Very true. Two of my students, believe it or not, my ex-students from many years ago, are happy owners of these, and they purchased them through a Montreal retailer. And uh, both are engineers at Soft Image, which do computer games yeah. for, <laughs> for the industry. That's and they awesome. said, oh, the kin play is amazing. And I said, yes, it was intended for that type of application, but also intended for the person who wanted some basic music in a, in a room or in a secondary room, or even if it's their first primary music listening room. Yeah, their flexibility is, is fantastic because you can go from – be as simple as Bluetooth from your phone mm -hmm. to streaming from a different source to using optical out from the back of a computer or yes. TV. And whatever you're doing, music, movies, TV, games, it's just all good. It is good. And if there's anything moving around in the sound field, you're going to realize it maybe for the first time when you have a speaker like that. Cool. Uh, my nephew, he's a great jazz musician, and he was setting up his apartment recently, and I said, well, I think that I said the can play mini would be uh, great for you. He says, well, it's very nice. I like the digital aspect and everything else. He says, but I also have a turntable. It's hip today to have a turntable. He's a jazz musician. He wants to expose some of his works maybe on LP. And, uh, and I mentioned to him, well, it has a pretty good phono section. So mm -hmm. those of you <laughs> who have a turntable, you can connect it. And this was one of my pet wants because I'm a bit of a turntable fanatic. And, oh, yeah. I, and uh, I wanted the... Can play to have also a very very good phono section for moving magnet, and it'll surprise you with its quality. And the, and, and with these, especially with that phono stage, because now that you got me thinking about that, mm -hmm. if you want a good outboard phono stage, and you, assuming you've bought a decent turntable to match, you could have three, four, five hundred dollars. Yes, I agree. But with that speaker, you're getting a great speaker that has a great amp built in, that has great connectivity built mm -hmm. in. The phono stage is bonus because that's definitely probably mm -hmm. the most expensive piece when it comes to connectivity. And if you were to try to match that in a traditional passive system with an amp and speakers and all that, you'd be well over double the price of those and not necessarily, and I'd, I'd say not, certainly not double the quality. In fact, mm -hmm. that would probably still beat most of those systems. We, we believe that this combination is a, is a really, really advantageous combination for the consumer who needs one like that. Absolutely. Uh, another good aspect about them is that their combination with the amplifier is also very strong. That amplifier is 90 watts. It has juice in it, and our digital amplifiers are built to very high standards. They sound like an AB amplifier. That means they sound like a standard great amplifier that one would put in their you know, uh, normal stereo systems. So it's built with that idea in mind. And the other thing, the other side of Ken is we, we started here, but now that's evolved into so many shapes and forms yes. that it, you have almost every application. We now have, like you said, a mini version of that. Yes. We have a passive version of that that's even smaller. Mm -hmm. We've got one that functions as a great center channel in the Ken Flex. Correct. And now we have, like, we have the Ken Solos replacing the original Tribe, which was a legendary. 
secondary speaker, yes. which I think for the money is insanely good. Thank you. Uh, I have I have a few customers that have done Ken Solo based theaters, and for mm -hmm. the money, they are incredible. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, now for applications where folks need something a little more space or lifestyle mm -hmm. friendly, the active Ken uh, soundbar. Sound so I kind of like to call it a speaker bar because it yes, really it is. is a decent pair of speakers yeah, rather than just being a sound bar. Is amazing. But look, that's a. I've got to remember that phrase. You know, it is a speaker bar because, in essence again has great bass energy from it again when we first showed it people would say where's the sub on it we said well we, we don't have a sub on mm -hmm. it it sounds great on wall it ha it is spatially very exciting the tweeters are on the outside portions of it and it goes way beyond its limit and the good thing about it is you can put it on wall you can put it on a tabletop and everything is in the box you have everything in the box ready to put on the wall or affixed to a tabletop or just lay around anywhere. And it gives you the ability to listen to diction on a TV, listen to a movie on a TV with, with at least a, a semblance of joy, you know? <laughs> it, for sure, and actually be able to make out what the characters are saying. It, it, true, true. Because uh, the, the most, <laughs> I think you said this to me earlier today, most sound bars don't actually really improve your TV speakers that much, rather they just get louder and it's just more of bad. Yes, it is, <laughs> it is. It is more of bad. And, uh, I like the Kin Play soundbar because, it, as I said, if I even if I listen to a sporting event or a music event, there's spatial cues in it that surprise me. I th so sometimes I listen to soccer because in in uh, Canada we listen to some of the we listen and we watch some of the European teams, and you think there's a thug in your backyard because all, all of a sudden there's a there's Somebody a noise being out. turned off to the right or to the left. And these are, again, the surprise factors that we crave mm -hmm. and we want to listen to in a speaker, not just the, the great sonic aspects that don't disturb you and don't fatigue you. You can listen to TV. I'm not saying you should listen to TV for a longer period of time, but you can do so with the, uh, with the Kin Play sound. Because they don't wear you out. No, they don't wear you out. And they are, they do not have a, the only thing that it doesn't have compared to the Kin Play is we don't have a, a phono section on it that's obvious for a can play soundbar mm. but it does have the added feature of a couple of few equalizations you can put it for cinema effect for flat sound effect and a couple more effects and th those can be advantageous when you're listening to a movie recently um and it'll be coming out on the channel soon guys I did a video for the Ken Force, mm -hmm. which I like how you've provided this option where you can have a stereo active bar as an all-in-one out-of-the-box solution, right. or you can get something like the Force, which will give you three channels of those same great Ken drivers and pairs up greatly with a compact slimline receiver. Mm -hmm. Boom, you got three channels. Yes. Add a pair of flexes for rears, and you've got a very competent, very capable, excellent surround system. It's just sure. like that. And it's not even that much of an investment in the grand scheme of things, yet it sounds like it's so much more. It, it does. That is our principle. You know, like uh, Lucy pushes us to come out with these products because she says we should address every aspect of the market. It's not just a prestige thing. It's not just uh, a money thing. It's a thing about exposing people to a correct sound. And that this correct sound through retailers and through distributors that are knowledgeable can bring this medium to a higher level or niveau, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, we find that there's been more dilution in audio products, not uh, a more stringent application of correct audio truths. Oh, absolutely. Um, we we kind of have a joke around here about certain products. Most uh, <laughs> I should be careful with this, but there's a lot of things that have turned into, let's just say, investor products. Yes. That's true. As in, they're not made by people who have a passion for what they're doing. They're just right. made to be in the black on the bottom of a balance mm -hmm. sheet. And what I have always loved about your company, I know it will always be this way, is you, the original founder, the chief designer, the owner, this is your passion and it's all you do. And it's all going to meet that standard. Otherwise, yes. why? Well, I love my job. I think I have the best job in the world. I'm able to alleviate myself of most of the business type worries because we have a great team and I'm able to devote myself a lot to product design that I think is feasible mm. and when these engineering challenges are thrown to me I'm sometimes taken aback because 
uh, our department, either sales, Lucy or someone else in the company, uh, will tell us, hey, you know, we should come out with this product because we think that it, survive, it should survive as a product, either as a niche or as a, a, a good representative product of what we do. Mm. And the Kin Play Soundbar falls into that category. Be, uh, excuse the Kin Play Soundbar and also the Kin Force. Yep. One active for the people who want all everything in there, and one passive, meaning that you add a small multi-channel receiver to it, and it activates beautifully. Uh, one other thing, our Kin Play Soundbar can also operate with our Kin and Sub wirelessly. So it transmits. I almost forgot about that. Yeah, it it transmits the information wirelessly. And that Kin 10 sub is a true performer. It's basically a little less than even this unit, and it moves there, but not in a droning fashion. Again, it does not hurt your ears. It's fast enough, but deep enough to fill up any room. When I heard the Ken sub 10, mm -hmm. I was pretty familiar with your product at that point. I had been here for going on two years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I was definitely expecting good, of course, because some of my favorite stuff, period. But even I was actually impressed. Like, okay, I was expecting good, but it was great, yeah. especially at the price point. Yeah, we, we, had, uh, we had built a few prototypes of it, and it should have been good enough to fulfill the price point. But we looked at each other and we said, I oh, will go all out. So the amplifier in the Kinten tub is actually an AB amplifier because it has more sustenuto for the bass. Yeah. So there's a huge transformer inside to activate the power supply for that uh, subwoofer, and it's still affordably priced. One of the theaters I did for one of my customers is three Ken Solos, mm -hmm. some uh, Ken Slim in walls for mm -hmm. the surround, uh, some of your tacks up top, and two Ken Sub 10s, and they love those subs. Yes, they're, they're made to action beautifully, and you, we can show you, yes, if you want the ultimate system, Totem can provide you with the ultimate on-wall or in-room or even in-wall systems. But if you want to go at a modicum of a, of a price point, Totem will give you top value. Oh, and, yeah. and things that you don't hear elsewhere. Uh, I think the kin distribution of product across the Totem bandwidth, it's not, it's lower cost, it's certainly not cheaper. And it has all the right attributes to give you a great sound at a modest price and bring out a lot of the great attributes that Totem is known for. And uh, and we have also other aspects. Don't forget, we have around 70 models. So if there's something in the lineup that you're considering, well, you'll find it in the Kin line or in our classic line or in the other uh, upper echelon element lineup. You know. And I do want to get into uh, moving from the Kin to the classic line in just a second. But let's get a, I want to get a quick bit in since a lot of the products fall under the Kin name sure. about your architectural stuff. Yes. Uh, I remember you were telling me that, for example, your end ceiling speaker has some pretty superlative qualities to it that if you really put your average end ceiling speaker under a microscope, you're not going to find elsewhere. Yeah, it's very true. Our in ceiling speakers, again, do not beam. How many times have you walked into a home or gone into a restaurant and you're hearing this blaring from these overhead speakers and you're saying, oh my gosh, I, this is not contributing to my uh, dining experience. It's just it's, chaos. It's just chaos and it just sounds like, you know, people fighting. And <laughs> in essence, an in ceiling <laughs> speaker can be a full range speaker and we've taken the correct attribute and the correct steps necessary to make a Kin 6.2, almost a full range speaker that you can put in the ceiling. And it has a full cast frame, not a, a little pliable frame like everybody else uses in a in-ceiling product. It's a cast frame product that has huge dynamic throw and potential. And all you have to do is try them. And if you don't need the extra dynamics, there's other Kin Slim and other lower cost units in our lineup that are just as beautifully voiced. Look, I, I play play a lot of diff cuts on all of our architectural systems, and I can be satisfied. Even when I put them in a cardboard box, they sound good. Yeah. So they're, they're guaranteed to sound good in a home and in that environment. And we have fully encapsulated back box units that are rectangular or square-shaped that you can put in ceiling. And the beautiful thing about the Kin architectural fully encapsulated, let's say 
you've been entertaining a, uh, a surround system or a movie system. And somebody in your house says, I don't want anything on the wall or in the room. You can actually put a 5.1, 5.2, 7.1, 7.2, 7.1, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.
six and a half inch driver, and it has tremendous throw out and in. The tweeter might look the same, but it's an evolution of the original tweeter. It still provides a very quiet space for music to develop, a very fast, transient ability. But again, the selection of materials and the selection of everything in this cabinet is just to make a speaker into a musical machine. The way that we built our cabinets, I think, is totally unique in the industry. A pair of signature ones take a full 10 hours of North American labor to assemble. Lock mitering the corners, that involves an incredible amount of work. Even if in today's world, we use CNC apparatus, we use jointing techniques that are still old world. And that extra gluing surface area allows for contraction and expansion to occur. And this is something that we learned over the decades of supplying products to the whole world, is that it can live in multiple environments. Expansion, contraction under those very difficult climatic extremes do not affect its integrity. Internally, we even veneer the cabinets. The cabinets are also externally veneered on the wood products. And we additionally apply a coating called borosilicate dampening. We believe that today, it still is the best energy dissipator for this particular use. Internally, we also assimilate a full plane cross brace between the tweeter and the woofer. The cabinet walls are close to three quarter inch. It's rather more than we do, but we wanted this cabinet to be incredibly stiff, to have all the benefits of the internal external veneering, but also to have the borosilicate fulfill its role to the utmost. I had to be specific, even though we utilize the best crossover parts and some very revolutionary capacitors and resistors in this particular unit. In fact, our part selection was just as careful as the forest signature. And that assimilation of very carefully selected parts had to contribute to the vision that this speaker will perform like no other monitor on the planet. We still utilize today in this particular model, full metal WBT connectors. And we purposely built this one with bi-wired capabilities. The full metal WBT connectors are utilized because of their flexibility and they withstand the test of time. These are not plastic units that will break. These are not things that will degrade with time. The drivers are fashioned into that cabinet face, and it's not an easy thing because we built our chassis as a monocoque hull. It's cumbersome to build in this fashion, but it's wonderful when the results are there at the end. It withstands the test of time in a better way. The Model 1 brought us 30 years. The Signature 1 will bring us another 30 glorious years. Right, and we're back. So that is a little intro to the classic series, particularly about the Signature One. And just a little shout out, thank you Soundstage for doing such a great interview of Vince at the factory. So Vince, with the classic line and the Signature One here that we've got representing, what are some of the goals or philosophies with these products? Because these are the ones that go back to your very start. After all, the Signature One itself is named as a evolution or descendant of your original Model 1, correct? Well, the original precept and idea still is valid today. Mm. Uh, these are built with the best componentry one can purchase and put together in a speaker and conceive. But it also has even more bass than it had before. It has more clarity, more openness. So each model has successive, successively progressed. We don't follow styling techniques or uh, fads and then discard lines just because it's like building a great guitar. Gibson doesn't get rid of their L5. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it goes on for decades and that's what we do with our products. It evolves a little bit, but yes. it's immediately still recognizable. Absolutely. And, there, and there's attributes and things that we want to keep in function. So the 
Signature one, the forest, the forest signature, mm -hmm. the wind design. Those are all amazing products that have given Totem a tremendous following throughout the planet, really. And these are sought after because of not only their longevity, but the musical pleasure that they give. Yeah, the wind design not only is an amazing sounding speaker, it's one of the coolest looking speakers I've ever seen. <laughs> it is great. When I had given the design, I remember to our cabinet, uh, our cabinet, you know, person or person in charge, he says, how could you put something counter angle and you expect me to sand it and do it correctly? I said, this is the most eff efficient, sonically aerodynamic chassis that can be conceived in a fairly large cabinet. Mm. We want it to image like the Dickens and <laughs> give everything possible. And those two double mid-range woofers operate in the same frequency scheme. So without cancellation, it had to be angled and done in that specific fashion. And it's a timeless design. We've had that design for close to 23, 24 years. Mm. And it's still beautiful because it is built with technique and it has been re-energized every four or five years to keep up to sonic perspectives of what totem should be. And that is our classic line. We even have the little arrow, the little arrow mini tower is, has an incredible following. Great imaging. I it. love the arrow. I think it's one of the best buys in the industry. It basically disappears into your room, even if you want to. Even if you want to hide your speaker, which I don't recommend, because it's a beautiful piece. Yes. But if you had to, it's so small, it just disappears. But its sound ain't small. It's not small, and it it actuates in a way that gets to the heart. That's why we call it the arrow. It is so energetic in terms of emotional reproduction capabilities, and you just have to listen to it. So I recommend that if somebody's interested in a very small tower that they come in addition as a gramophone. Oh, it's, yes. It's an amazing little unit and a good little integrate or something else that the gramophone can recommend can make it sting. I could go on and on about the Arrow. I own a pair. Yeah, my great. family's using them right now, <laughs> and we so love them. The Arrow is one of our classic lineups, like the Signature One, like the Forest, uh, like we have center channels that are still part of the Signature series. And we also have uh, other units like the Sky and the Sky Tower and others that that fit that bill, and each are winners in their own category. Oh, yeah. Uh, we don't get rid of models, as we said, unless we have something practical to put forward at approximately the same price. But that that is a serious evolution built around the same type of component. Even as those evolve, they remember their, they remember their successors. Yes. I think Totem is one of the few speaker brands and makes that even among used product, if you bought... I don't know, at the initiation as a Model 1 uh, 30 years ago for maybe $1,400, you can still get $1,700 on the used market for it. Oh, yeah. So they, they retain their value very well because it's still a product that is relevant after 30 years. And yeah, it's funny. It, some people, when they first get introduced to this world, they look at some very, very high-end things. They go, man, I could buy a car for that. But then I say to them, but look at it this way. If you have a real passion for this kind of thing, not only does it make sense from that perspective, but let's talk about it economically. Mm -hmm. What depreciates it bad as a car? Almost nothing. Speakers, good speakers, hold value. Very true. They do. They're actually a very good store of value. Yeah, a, a very good speaker does. And ours being compact, well, you can also interassemble it. One thing that I've noticed and that I made a point, because I was a consumer, as I said, I felt a little cheated by some of the purchases that I made, and I thought I was not misled, but certainly misled in a certain way, either by reading what they didn't do or by they didn't weren't relevant after a while. But I can gratifyingly say that every model in our lineup, if you buy a purchase a pair of arrows and in 10 years' time you want to purchase an element metal, well, you can actually use the arrows as rear channels if you want to do so because our phasing is the same for all our speakers. It doesn't matter what type of tweeter or woofer we utilize, but we can intermix one with the other. In fact, one of my best demonstrations down in California was placing an arrow right behind a wind design on one side and playing the wind on the other. And I was playing them both in stereo and people were getting the total picture and saying, wow, what a great presentation. Then I took the arrow out from back of the wind and said, well, there's an arrow playing here on one side. 
just to show people how they assimilate beautifully. So that, hence, just to say that any product in our lineup, whatever is purchased from us, will always intermix well with anything else in our lineup. And so on that note of value, because everything in the totem line shares the same DNA, is designed to, as you go up the line, obviously improve, mm -hmm. but still just be a finer polish of the same idea. Mm -hmm. You scale, you hold value, just like you said. Yeah. Maybe you get a, a, a higher-end pair of front speakers, mm -hmm. but then you put the arrows in the back, you have not lost that value. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, another thing, which is I think should be included in the classic line, mm. is some of the tribe products, because the tribe products are basically classic in themselves. Yes. So the standard, we used to have the tribe one and tribe two on wall, which set standards for on walls. Oh, they certainly. defined what an on wall could be. Yes. And the tribe three still today sets absolutely world leading standards for on wall use. With the growing complexity of our world and the subsequent uh, challenges that we had, we were not forced because we always offered the option of having flex, three flexes or three something up front. But some people want a sound bar and a passive one to extract the maximum from a system. It took us a year and a half just to tune the lower sound bar that you see here in front. And the lower sound bar that that will be shown is this one here, this lower one. It's a three-channel unit that you would put under your TV or on top of a cannel top. Do not think of this as a sound bar. If the Kin Play sound bar is a speaker can, bar, a speaker bar, this is a fantastic speaker bar. In fact, we made a presentation to the staff here today, where we were playing just the outside channels of the sound bar, and people were saying, "Whoa, this doesn't sound." normal this is an incredible unit so don't think of this as a soundbar just think of it as a compact three channel system and don't forget that this is just three inches and a quarter deep you can place it underneath the tv it's available in white or black it has the magnetic grills but it gives you a soundscape that is absolutely gigantic and the best thing about it is that these tweeters were specifically enger engineered the tweeter is a small the small thing on the middle channel. The high frequencies were specifically engineered that if you put a rear channel, be it an in-ceiling or a little monitor in the back, you'll actually hear overhead information in phase. This is not magic. This is because it is so much in phase between the two units, and these tweeters are specifically engineered for that. So so science you, and a little passion. Yes, a little passion, and that it makes for an incredibly adaptable system. So if you're looking for the ultimate soundbar and you're not too finicky that it, it's not exactly the size of your TV because now I think that fad has gone by. This is a nice size for a TV to put under one of the, some of the larger TVs and it doesn't have to reach the end of the TV. Designers who tell you that I think have lost merit on the occasions. Oh yeah. And, and you can put a nicely crafted soundbar underneath but get a full spectrum sound from it. With the addition of a slimline sub, such as a tribe or a kin sub, with a couple of rear channels, you get almost Atmos action overhead without the complexity of doing a whole Atmos system, which you can, of course, do an Atmos system oh, yeah. in conjunction with this. Uh, we have done plenty of the trios yes. with kins in the rear and the side right. or kin ICs up yes. top. It's great. Yeah. You, could, you could hardly want for more. Yes, and a one-box receiver it runs this wonderfully. And believe it or not, even the small space that is at the end of this particular unit can give you bass down to close to 50 hertz. Mm. What, uh, what does that mean? Again, in layman term, it's got get good bass for great bass, if you hear it, and articulate with, pa with, with essence and feeling. You'll be shocked at this particular sound bar. And one thing that I've, I've taken note of, just there's still a little bit of wisdom to matching up certain products mm -hmm. with others, even though your product is very flexible and very forgiving yes. in that regard. But I have noticed very popular piece of electronics all around here, especially for home theater or Marantz receivers, mm -hmm. and Totem plus Marantz is a winner. Yes, they are. They are. We, uh, we actually have Marantz units at our shop, and we obviously test the, these units on them, and they are a, a, a very valid and very effective mix oh yeah say together it's it's really good stuff yes, i agree and when, and my favorite thing 
about this bar, the whole speaker bar thing, even more so with the the tribe trio. You're moving up from the kin to the tribe, mm -hmm. something more indicative of the classic line. Correct me if I'm wrong, but these are very close to like sky tower drivers, correct? They are, you know, they they are a version of the sky tower driver, and the sky tower driver is a fairly extensive unit. That's a yeah. one heck of a driver. Yeah, it is one heck of a driver. Again, it has fantastic magnetics, great drive, and we decided to put it in here, and I made it work. It took me six months longer than I wanted, but I made <laughs> it work in this very small chassis and to great advantage because the driver was so great. I think a couple of years ago you told me that it was also known as the solution bar. Yes, it was the solution which bar. Which is an apt name yes, because yes. you had to work out a solution to make this work <laughs> and then for the end user it is a great solution for someone who says, okay, I need the convenience of something in this form factor, but it needs to sound good. Yeah, that was our, our of course our, our VP sales and leader had told him that decided to call it that. She says, that's a great solution, Vince. It's not just a, a sound bar. Thank you. Uh, that was thank you thank for you bringing Lucy. it up too. Yeah, <laughs> it was. And of course, we have we have these two sound bars. The, in fact, we have three sound bars. We have the Tribe Solution, this Tribe Solution bar. We have also the Kin, what we call the Force, which is a mm -hmm. three channel, but much lesser cost than this one. Still great though. Still, oh yeah, still great, absolutely. And of course, we have the power unit in the Kin, you know, the Kin Play system. We have this unit that's on top, and this is our upper echelon, of course, on wall product. The this is where we start to scratch the element series. Yeah, this is where we scratch a little bit of the element series and the tribe series because whenever you see these heavy mechanical units that we assemble and machine at Totem. Well, this takes close to three hours and 45 minutes to make one of these drivers. This is not a 10 minute job. And to do these with this precision, so we use no crossovers, and for it to operate between 30 hertz and four or 5,000 hertz, you need to have skillful assembly and theoretical technique behind that. It's just astonishing what it, what it can do. The Torrent driver is one of my most favorite things in audio, and I think that it, no, I don't just think. I know for a fact that is the most overbuilt four-inch unit that yes. is on the face of the planet. It's purposely done in that way. We have to magnetize these individually. They are built to Swiss watch, you know, credentials. They're not built to standard woofer credentials. We have a full-time person that just does the fine assembly on the cones and the surrounds and things of that nature. It's not an easy task. So with the Torrent, we've moved not only into the cutting edge of dynamic driver mm -hmm. tech, but also just into the elite of the design and manufacturing, which we actually have a video feature for, so we can show you guys what goes into making this Torrent driver. is crazy. Check this out. With the advent of the Tribe 1 and 2, we had reached a certain performance parameter. And it was fantastic. When we tried to build a larger format one for the upcoming uh, larger TV and screens, multiplying the drivers gave us a little bit more dynamics, but there was nothing special. And the evolution had to proceed in a certain fashion for Totem. We had to make it special. It's no use doing what other companies do, building form factors and then multiplying drivers. Everyone does that. There is no sonic, musical, and performance advantage. So we wanted to take a huge step. We had said, why not develop a product that is aesthetic, less drivers, more beautiful, but reaches performance aspects that were never attempted before. And that was basically the birth of the torrent revolution. Not only is this a Neo bundle that is one of the world's most powerful, but it also encloses a voice coil that is under unbelievable control. And we found that putting that magnet on a standard frame did not work because vibrational characteristics and other characteristics just rendered it incorrect. So we had to machine the same as one would machine a Swiss watch with precision, with care, and with advanced science, a driver 
that has a Freer resonance of 26 hertz, and usually a small three and a half inch, four inch driver of this size, as soon if you would try to give it such a low end, low frequency resonance, it would lose control. But with this incredible magnetics, the strength of the chassis machined on a CNC, enamel logo, almost half inch thick faceplate, we're able to achieve a sturdiness that was not otherwise doable before. And to top it off, knowing the effort that we had to achieve to reach the type of performance in the Tribe 1 with specific coils and specific parts, why not eliminate the crossover? Eliminating the crossover gave us a phase breadth and an articulation breadth that was not possible before. So, welcome back everybody. Hope you like that little feature driver, the most overbuilt driver in dynamic speakers. Thing was machined totally custom mm -hmm. because that was the only solution, right? It was the only solution for this type of application. Don't forget this is revolutionary. No crossover in the woofer path. It operates in a full range from the lowest register to the highest. No caps, no resistors, none, none of that. that. None of that. And that gives you allows you for a greater dispersion of sound better phase integration. We can use this in a surround package, this particular unit, LCR, or if you have metal element metals in the front, you can use these for side support. We also have a Tribe 5, which is larger than this, and you can utilize it as a center, or you can even get the wood, element wood as a center. And that's channel. like your dedicated large that's center, right? That's a dedicated large center. But the ultimate sense, ultimate surround system, pair of metals, a wood center channel, a few tribe threes such as this, all torrent. You have a spectacular system that cannot be equaled, I believe, by anything on the planet. Because and the imaging is out of this world. The speed is unbelievable. The speed is the is the key. And you mentioned the metals. The metal uh, that'd be the version two, and that is your your largest, most flagship everything you got kind of tower speaker, right? It is. A lot of people say, well, why don't you build a more expensive one? Because necessarily it wouldn't be better. <laughs> you know, the two torrent drivers give you an enormity of mid-range, but also base potential beyond anything. And a speed quotient that is accepted worldwide as the best in dynamic drivers. And this is because of that torrent technology that Totem has fastidiously, let's say, developed over the last 17 years. Mm. It's something that we're extremely proud of. And you have them all here. There's also a fire monitor. We just last week received a review from Absolute Sound, Golden Ear Award, because it is a fire that the fire is a monitor that's slightly larger than these, of course, and, and the classic one, but can sound like a giant box. So the fire, I've always said this about the fire, uh, is some call it monitor, some call it bookshelf. Right. But the fire is the bookshelf slash monitor that yes. doesn't know it's a bookshelf. <laughs> Correct. Like, and don't tell it because it won't <laughs> yeah. believe you. No, it won't believe. At Munich, we just came back from the Munich show three three months ago or so, four months ago, and we instead of playing the metals like we normally do in this gigantic room, we just played the fires on the VTL product, and it was stupendous. People were just slack jawed listening to it. It's just like, how does that do yeah, that? Do that, and we wanted to make a point. Hey, look, it can do it when it wants to. And, and you can put these on the tabletop, and you can still build a surround around it. A pair of fires, Tribe 5 or the wood, a few Tribe 3s all around, and you're done. One thing that blows my mind about the fires is they can just shout, but with clarity, and fill a room. Sure. But you can also turn them down a little bit, get your head right in between them, mm -hmm. and they are basically just as good near field. Yes, they are. Which is, there. you don't find that. It's, I love the fire. You know, I think it's an astonishing speaker, and I've been known to say that it's, we think it's the world's best monitor, but it's not a, an un unaffordable thing. It's fairly affordable, and you can put it as a neck plus ultra type U with the amazing Torrent 7-inch driver, which has that full 1-inch throw possibility and great bass and clear mids. What could one ask more? And I would say this about virtually all of your product line, but especially the highest end torrent stuff. It's the most overbuilt, solid, yes, and most incredibly made speaker. 
So if someone is going to invest in that, and it really, all things considered in this industry, a very fair price, mm -hmm. that could easily be, at least for what the category you're using it for, your last speaker, or at least one you're going to have for 30 years or so. We believe so. You know, I think that the if, if somebody buys a pair of flyers or a pair of medals, that is a, a, an end speaker for them. Oh, yeah. All they would need would be just the juxtapositioning of correct electronics, which you can certainly supply, and any type of cabling and wiring that is necessary for them. But it's a, a wonderfully expressive unit that is flexible and easy to use in a room. And I would even say that in 30 years from now, say you were to hand that down to your children, sure, new products will come out, but even in that amount of time, it's not going to be completely surpassed because it is already at the forefront. We, we like to think that, yes. I think it, uh, that is a true statement. That's what I got just from <laughs> listening from it, at least. <laughs> it's really wonderful stuff. The, um, the Torrents... The torrent-based product, though, like the Tribe 3s and 5s, the on-wall speakers that, again, just much like the fire doesn't know it's a bookshelf, don't tell anyone these aren't an on-wall, and if they can't see them, they won't believe it because they sound like a, a tower hanging on your wall. Correct. Uh, we have one of our demo theaters here in the Timonium showroom is basically all Tribe 3s. It'll blow you away. Like, you would never imagine it is just three of these relatively small speakers. It purposely built that way, you yeah. know, to give you that speed, quickness, and articulation, and non-fatigue factor, as we said. Torrent is revolutionary. Everyone presents the same salad one way or the other way every year, and they charge more. We try to keep it relative and long-lasting in a great way. I'm going to tell everybody a little secret, if you don't mind. Sure. If you guys want to build a killer theater, which we can help you with, by the way, a theater that, for the money you will spend, I don't think would be surpassed without spending 10 times as much. Get three Tribe Fives from Vince here at Totem. Put them behind a screen that you build just a little box, a little box behind and go. And you would have to spend astronomical money to even attempt to do better, and I don't think you would. Like Those are some secret sauce speakers. Thank you. Thank you. We just uh, actually we sold six pair to a gentleman in in Tokyo, uh, six levels. All he did was put tribe fives with the solution stuff on each level of around fifteen hundred to two thousand square feet. It's one of the most expensive residences in Tokyo, mm -hmm. and yet he bought an economical North American product for it. You know, <laughs> and it blew his mind. The the it just looks so elegant. The tribe five is of course a longer version of the Tribe 3, and it's astonishing. You're, you have good instinct on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's like you had said earlier, that for whatever price point you set out to build something for, you're going to get every penny worth of that value and more into it. True. Especially with the torrent uh, and element units, definitely. These are world-leading units that are compact and usable. Absolutely. Well, I think that is pretty much everything we've got on the product itself, mm -hmm. but we always like to do question and answers for our audience here. Okay. So let's move on to the Q&A if you're ready for that, Vince. Sure I am. Oh, excuse me. Let's see here. Peter asks, why do Totem products sound so different from most other speakers? That's a pretty good question. Well, uh, it's easy to say for me. I always thought that our speakers sounded differently, but it they sound different because the phase relationship in the speaker has been correctly positioned. That means that they don't beam, they formulate an image in space. If you stand up, walk around, that imaging stays stable. You notice oftentimes you walk in front of a speaker and it's sort of irritating when you reach a certain angle of degree in front of it. Mm. And that's the beaming characteristics. Our speakers, like you, you noticed in our demonstrations, sound like a voice. So it's like having voices in the room. They don't really disturb you because they are in phase. Mm. And that is hence why we articulate our speakers that way. Another wonderful aspect of them is they're always to pace to the music. We religiously pace our speakers to real music. They're not paced to some ridiculous objective in a, in a listening room, and they're not, they're not paced to unrealistic anechoic measurements. They're paced to real room listening situations. This is where we do our finalized tuning in multiple real rooms. 
So therefore, in a real room, they will sta- sound outstanding, lifelike, and real. Mm. And these are built to exacting standards that don't degrade with time. So you, whenever you listen to a totem speaker standing up, sitting down, it always sounds natural and encompassing. And I think that's the difference that Peter has heard. Mm. What else we got here? I believe that's Gene says, should I go with an element product or a classic product? Uh, that is the age-old totem conundrum because, mm-hmm. for example, a tribe tower and a four signature are almost the same price point. And I don't yes. know if I could choose because they're both just so good. But what would you say to that? Well, I'll tell you uh, a story about uh, we had a, a demonstration once in New York, and mm. there was a couple of musicians that came to it among the fairly large crowd auditioning both the Forest Signature and the Tribe Tower. And some of the people there finding out that one was a classical musician, p- pianist, and the other one played cello, they asked them, well, w- what do you think of these speakers? What should you choose? And the classical musicians told him very honestly, he says, if you like, like you're in a studio and you're listening, you're RVG, who is one of the best mixers for jazz in, in the world, and you're, you're listening to this, you want to mix it and match it perfectly, and you want a rectangular soundstage with everything placed nice and quiet, four or six are the ones. So that'd be a classic. Classic, you know, wonderful positioning with sort of a sophistication to them. If you want the music live, as if you're part of it, you're right in it, you're exacting illuminance to the music, he says, choose the tribe tower. Mm. And one of the musicians says, I want the four six, and the classical pianist said, I like the (laughs) tribe tribe towers. So you should listen to both and make up your mind. They're both wonderfully successful and also wonderfully re- rewarding for oh, yeah. both aspects. It just comes down to little yeah. fine differences of yes. taste, but there's really no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. The Tribe Tower for an elegant placement anywhere, much easier to place. It can be placed upside down in any corner, in any place. So if you want flexibility, the Tribe Tower is astonishing. And that's one thing I noticed about the Tribe. I had a pair of Tribes at, at home to test out for mm-hmm. a weekend as well when I was doing a review on them. Mm-hmm. And I did mess around with the placement a lot, and it was just always good. Yes. That, like some were a little bit better than others, of course, yeah. but its flexibility was extreme. Well, was outstanding, yes. That, that's the, one of its great attributes. What do we got next? John says, are totems good for home theaters? Oh, yeah, especially if you heard my last comment about that. But what products should I look at? Well, I think that any totem can be assimilated into a home theater. I'd agree. You know, uh, that's if you already have, let's say, signature ones and you want to put a home theater, get a Tribe 3 for a center or get a, a wood center or get something as a center, put some kin solos on the side or some of our fantastic kin in ceilings, and you've got a competent surround system. For myself to tell you, is one better than the other? Yeah, that's a magical one. The and tribe towers with the, with everything around them, magical, compact. Oh, absolutely. And but everything is is intermixable. But personally, for surround, the highest echelon is the torrent product. Yeah, I, and, I would agree with that too. Yes. I think so, something about the, the speed of the torrent lends yes. itself particularly well to movie effects. Yes, they're they're astonishing. They're like lightning. So. Anything that you hear in a movie will be brought out in the Torrent product. Go watch Top Gun on any Torrent driver (laughs) speaker, and you'll hear every flyby, every Mm -hmm. bullet, everything. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you guys saw that little clip that we just played, that center channel you saw there, that's the Wood V2 Element Series center Mm -hmm. channel. I dare you to find a faster, more capable center channel than that. It's one of my favorites. And that system was actually a clip of our Gaithersburg showroom, so go hear it. Yes. It'd be worthwhile to to have a listen to that. And I'll just repeat what I had said a little bit earlier. I I think some of the secret sauce for Totem Home Theater, again, any Mm -hmm. Element Series product, uh, but if you can't do metals in a wood, you get still really close and really, really good if you can do three Tribe 3s, or better yet, three Tribe 5s behind a screen, game over, forget it. You're never going to want for more. Yep. The support staff at Totem, which is the support speakers, are wonderful. And they make the prime speakers up front sound even better. 
you know, that's the strength again. Of oh, the yeah. totem, the totem thing. What do we got next? I can't quite make out that name there, but what are the differences between the Signature 1 bookshelf and Fire V2 bookshelf from a porting perspective? Mm -hmm. That is an excellent question. I feel that the Fire has next to no port noise. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason for that? That is a very good question. Yeah, that's an excellent question. A little technical, but I'll give I like you the it. answer. Yeah. Uh, the Signature 1 is, that's this particular unit here, with some of our classic series, is a wonderful speaker. It's basically a forest signature in a very small box. Yep. And it's like comparing the forest to the metal. It's not really a fair comparison. You know, the metal has more potential than the forest, but the forest is easier to use. You can just plunk it in a room and get some great sound from it. The metal needs some very good electronics, although it can work with 70, 80 watts of tube and around 100 watt integrate and up. And it'll provide you, it's quite efficient. But it's sort of unfair to compare one to the other. The Fire is a top-notch monitor, one of the world's best. I consider the Signature one one of the most listenable monitors. Mm -hmm. There are studios that use it as a reference monitor because it gives you a great balance. It's totally liquid in its imaging capabilities in the background. It resurrects voices incredibly. It's a seductive monitor. The Fire operates like a giant speaker if you want it to. It doesn't have as much port noise because it's the seven inch driver that is inside can produce extreme bass energy based on a different principle, the torrent principle, which is different from a standard, a more standard speaker, a driver. The, the whole behavior of the torrent woofer yeah. is, is just its own animal. Yeah. Uh, and how not only that magnet structure that you designed, but that the polypropylene cone is just turns on a dime snappiness it and it's not to say that these aren't quick as well no, they certainly are they're wonderful but the fire is definitely going for right. the way that i like to describe the torrent drivers are it, it's like they're an elegant aggression yes they are <laughs> <laughs> i don't forget that these are different price points the, the this one is a little around half the cost of a of a fire so you're talking different price points the in totem's book if something's going to be twice the cost, it better do something better, a lot better. Oh, yeah. And that's why the fire ultimately can do more. But if you have very good electronic, the Signature 1 is plenty good for most people. It's a fantastic monitor. And as I said, long term, incredibly pleasing. But if you want the ultimate monitor, by all means, the element, the element fire with its torrent 7-inch cannot be duplicated anywhere. Hmm. I love the fire. What else we got here? Ned says, why have I never heard of Totem until now? Know, right? How come you're not in big box stores? Another great question. Yes. Well, Totem is a company that can only reproduce by hand. You saw the little video where it takes us 10, 11, 12 hours to produce a pair of monitor speakers. These are not foldable units, you know, that are vinyl wrapped and made to look shiny. And basically... What you're getting at the end is a facsimile of what a good speaker should be. These are long-term objective speakers that require, just in the assembly of the crossover in the, in the signature one, it requires close to an hour and a half just for the crossover assembly for each one. So these are consume time, they consume energy, and these are hand-built. They're not made by mega machines over in the Orient or somewhere else. This is not a product to be... Uh, taken lightly, and we can only produce a certain amount of them. And we only wish that our product be represented by people who know what to do with it. If we put it in a big box store where the guy could be selling, I don't know, fertilizer one day and then speakers another day, or it's misrepresented, people do not will not get the idea of what it is. Um, hmm. It's like trying to sell pâté de foie gras, if you like that, or if you like some exotic vegetable in a normal Costco. It just will not do or, you know, doesn't get done correctly. Uh, each torrent driver, as we mentioned before, well, the little four inch driver takes four hours, uh, almost close to four hours, three hours and 45 minutes to build one driver. That's in machining time and assembly that's time. It's almost as much as one average speaker. Yeah. That's more than yeah. most speakers. So out of the 10,000 drivers that we produce in a year, which is a lot of time necessary to assemble these, 
we can only give them out to se certain select stores. Mm. Box stores are not intended for that purpose, and we will not decrease our quality to put them everywhere. So I can buy another Ferrari. I don't need one. I don't. I have a used old one. That's all I need. <laughs> I don't need multiples of things. And it looks like Carol says, finding a speaker for my awkwardly shaped room has been hard. How well would totems be able to work in it? That's a really great question because we did question. talk a lot about flexibility with yes. these products. If you're talking about a floor standing model, I think the two most flexible towers, even for weird shaped rooms, are the Arrow and the Tribe Tower. Yep. So that gives oh, you yeah. two separate entities at two very different price points. And if you're thinking of putting a speaker in room, you can also put a speaker on wall. Even a kin solo, a pair of kin solos with a little sub is wonderful in a room, even if it's shaped freakishly and you think that it'll never sound good. It'll liberate your floor space and it'll sound good. If you have the budget, two tribe threes, by all means. And these are solutions that we can offer. But don't be afraid that if your room is irregularly shaped that the totems will not sound right. They were developed to be in standard, normal rooms that people can utilize every day. You don't have to put padding. You don't have to f refill your cushions with special fill. It can all be done naturally. One of my favorite things about your products, and this applies to virtually all of them, compared against other speakers, and I'm not saying this is bad, you know, there's purpose for it, but you're able to achieve excellent sound by just taking a speaker, putting it almost anywhere in the room, as little as six inches off the back wall, mm -hmm. And you don't have to pull out a protractor or a laser and tow it in a perfect 15, 20, yes. 25 degrees. No, flat on the wall, just eyeball it, yep. and it sounds perfect. Yes, that's very true. Look, oftentimes I'm asked uh, sometimes, oh, how much do I tow them in? If I have to tow them in, I want, do I tow this one in 5 degrees? That one's, I said, if you do have to tow them in, just tow one of them in, you know, if you do have to, because the room is weirdly shaped. Again, don't believe that these have to be angled in a specific way. They talk to you like a voice. If I speak to you dead on and you're listening to me, or if I speak to you five degrees over, it still sounds basically the same. So you, yeah. can, you can apply that principle with our product. And that comes back to how you do your phase and yes. therefore yes. the dispersion, dispersion into the room like a voice. Correct. Very, very true. Okay. And I think that is the end of our questions. So... That's a wrap, Vince. Well, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much for coming down, well, man. Thank you, and Luke, that was, I think, one of the more you. fun sessions that we've ever had because thank we really to got to get into the nitty-gritty of why this stuff is so much fun. We did with some of our most favorite products with one of our closest friends in the industry. <laughs> so well, we really appreciate you. And we got a comment. Seven Tribe Five sound amazing. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. That is, a, that is a statement that could be posted as a measure of truth. <laughs> it's very true. Made in the USA. Not the USA, but close. Canada. Close Canada. We're one of your allies and yes. neighbors. Montreal. So yep. actually quite close to the line. The aluminum is actually bought in the U.S. most of it. <laughs> Not in Canada. Well, there you so go. There we go. So assembled in Montreal yep. with some U.S. friendly components. So Absolutely. there we go. It's a good partnership. I like it. And thank you for all those comments thanking uh, Vince. Thank you for we, the, we really uh, appreciate you guys that you guys feel as happy to have him as I do and the rest of us at Gramophone do. So, Vince, thank appreciate you, very much, you sir. Thank, thank you, you so to much the for coming. And, and thank you to the people who are listening and actually proffered some of those questions. They were very interesting. Very good questions. Absolutely. Yes. Good. All right, guys. We'll catch you next time. All Be seeing you.